Be sure to stick around to the end of this video to see my exciting new expo pickup. What's up everybody? Welcome back to another video on my channel. My name is Dion and you're watching Reptile Yaddis. Friends, we are at the June 25th Reptile and Plant Expo in Toronto. This place is amazing. Wait till you see what's out there. Let's have a look. So as you can see behind me, it is popping in here. There's so many people, so many exciting vendors, incredible animals left, right and center. And if you go all the way over to the other side here, we have the plant section. I mean, a lot of the reptile vendors, there's a lot of blending. Everybody's keeping plants in their vivariums for doing bioactive and whatnot. But we have a dedicated plant section further over there. You find all your cool aeroids, familiads, different kinds of philodendrons, you name it, orchids. If you love plants and reptiles, this is the place you need to be. It, it is quite the event and it's an awesome way to kick off the summer holidays. <laughs> Hello, how's it going? I'm Braden. And I'm Natasha. Since Dion's too busy at these expos, being a celebrity and all, we're gonna be filming all the B-roll for you. So all this B-roll is brought to you by us. Woo, let's go. While this was certainly a pleasant surprise, my friends over at Exotic Addicts produced a white-eyed crocodile skink, Triple Anonis Nova Guinea, that was for sale at the expo. Someone scooped them up fast. here at the June 2023 Expo and we're just having a look at all the animals making sure everybody's looking healthy and happy and that we don't have any issues. So far everything's been great. No issues today actually. I think. Wonderful. Thank you Dr. Brown. Thank you. What are you learning there? Why naturalistic keeping thanks to Northern Lights Reptile. Why did the chameleon jump in a blender? Why? to blend in. <laughs> All right. Hey guys, this is Dan with Live Beetles Canada. We're Canada's number one supplier of captive bred stag beetles and rhinoceros beetles. If you guys are interested, you could check us out at Collieoptera.com or Live Beetles Canada on Google. Uh, Instagram is Collieoptera with two R's and three underscores. So we have tons of different types of beetles. They're 100% legal. And what my goal is to really destigmatize the fear of insects and spread the amazing hobby that is uh, beetle breeding in Canada. So over here we have the late instar larva of the eye click beetle. The, la the larva are predatory and they feed on stag beetle and wood boring beetle larva as well as fly larva and wasp larva. And over here, this is what the adult looks like. Wow. So there you go folks, as you can see, we have some beautiful native insects in Ontario and Canada at large. Stunning. Like, I'm gonna try really hard not to. You're show. good, you're good. This works perfect. So what are their names? Ooh. Josephine and Toby? Okay, sounds good. Okay, yeah, I, I don't mind that. Well, that is way too close. <laughs> <laughs> I added it two times. Here. Look at them. Just a cute little happy They're married very couple. Content. Josephine and Toby. <laughs> we came to the expo and we're ju we're, we're looking for like jumping spiders. We were thinking about a corn snake, well, so we actually did get one. And we actually got a few more things than just that. We did get a jumping spider and we got a Pac-Man frog. Yeah, Pac-Man frog. Yeah, we got one of those. Very cool. Thanks for showing me, buddy. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm here, we got some, some leaf litter which Diane made, made fun of us for. Yeah. Oak leaf litter. <laughs> right. 
<laughs> some, some you could have got that in your backyard. I know. <laughs> I know. I'm teasing. I'm uh, teasing. And, and a dirty and a dirty filter. Yeah, right. Oh, wow. Good stuff, guys. Come out to the Toronto Reptile Expos. L lots of quality stuff. Awesome. Uh, follow High on Daddy. No. Nope. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and you have to cut that out. <laughs> and you, what do you got there? Oh, more leaves. More later. leaves. Right oh, on. Litter, baby. Right on. Awesome, guys. Enjoy uh. the show. Someone else say they want to say. I think it was an eyelash diaper for me too, but also the pump that diapers were really cool. Yeah, I would say the granular glass or granular glass frog was one of them, and also the granulated ufaga, the ufaga granulifera was top cheese, one of the best. The common name is rough knobtail. They are very pretty, small geckos. And what's funny about them is they waggle the tail when they hunt. The size between the male and the female is yeah, always impressive for Yeah, it's crazy. People. The female is so big. Yeah. Sometimes you need to focus in on that one plant that the misting system is not hitting. I use uh, lots of monsoons uh, just because I like bioactive enclosures more that are way more humid. I'm Dawn from Tangled in Webs and welcome. We specialize in uh, captive bred arachnids. We love to bring the magic of tarantulas to your hands and uh, show you the wonderful world and introduce you to these amazing creatures. Thank you so much. Okay, now, normally I'm not looking for anything but plants from Mark Pepper leaf litter, things like that at these events. But today, I did bring some money and I have an intention. Now you're probably gonna sigh and wonder why, because most of the things I'm keeping are a little less common. Today we're looking for a common leopard gecko, Eublepharis maculatus. And I'm not talking any type of morph, no tangerine tornado, black knight, nothing like that. I just want an immaculate, normal leopard gecko. And funny enough, I think that might be hard to find. We'll keep our eyes peeled, we'll let all our other friends know Everybody find Dion a normal leopard gecko. If we find one, we're gonna be good. We're gonna be set up well. I really wanna keep a leopard gecko. It's been years since I've owned one. Many of you own them. I think it'd be fun to make content about how to keep them properly. So that's the goal for today. Finding a normal leopard gecko.
Alrighty, uh, I'm Jared, and I came here for some lineatuses today, but I ended up finding my favorite YouTuber, and I just so happened to wear the right shirt. Woo! Let's Hopefully go. you guys can see that. Yeah. Repping the Mini Dragon brand. Let's go. Thanks, brother. Anytime. Did you hear about the old chameleon that couldn't change color? Oh. Poor guy had a reptile dysfunction. Uh, hey, I'm Austin. Uh, I am a macro photographer. I specialize in invertebrates, uh, arachnids, and reptiles and amphibians. Awesome. Reptile Expos just fly by. I honestly had such a great time on the 25th. And that's no surprise. Reptile shows are a testament to the beautiful and diverse community we are all a part of. All right, everyone, that concludes today's expo. What an incredible show. Came home with some critters I wasn't expecting to. Interesting day. We'll go home and take a look at everything I picked up, but so awesome to start the summer off this way. Last show before the Canadian Reptile Breeders Expo, which unfortunately I will not be attending because I'll be out in Orlando, Florida for Animal Con. Then there'll be the October Expo and we'll be very excited to get back into the Toronto Reptile Expo then. So thank you so much to Brayden and Tash for going around filming all the B-roll for today's video and for filming moments like this. You guys are awesome. Thank you, buddy. You're the man. All right guys, we're back from the Reptile Expo. What an amazing time. I want to sincerely thank the organizers for putting on such a great show, Grant Crossman. Thank you so much to Danielle and the rest of the team who take care of the influencers so much, you know? Um, I really had a lot of fun participating in the panel, so thank you so much for that opportunity as well. And it was such a blessing and so humbling and fun as always to meet so many fans and viewers of the channel. I really appreciate you all so much. Meeting you all in person is so cool. Truly, again, and I couldn't be doing what I'm doing without you. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Now it's time to see what I brought back from the show. There were some pretty incredible animals and I was not expecting to see so many crocodile skinks at this show. When I say so many, seeing one in general is a rare sight and occurrence. And we not only saw Trebulonotus novaginia at exotic addicts table, I was also able to find this little juvenile that I'm hoping to raise up and pair with one of three females that I have that still aren't paired up. I'd like to source two more males. It was sort of a more surprise. I, I thought I'd be waiting quite some time to find new crocodile skinks, but this is a tiny juvenile wild caught animal that I'm gonna acclimate in a small bin and we'll set that up now and then I'll show you what else I picked up at the expo. All right, everybody, so here we go. This is all I picked up from the show. And I don't wanna say all I picked up because usually this is what I pick up. You know, some, some leaf litter, some cool plants. But today we have this lovely juvenile red-eyed crocodile skin. Hi, buddy. So, you can see they're just a youngin' still, but the adult colors are coming in. That yellow head is pretty well faded. They, they do have some markings or stuck shed on their head. I'm sure over time that'll heal just fine. But yeah, I decided to take a chance on this animal. I feel fairly confident in my capacity, or, or I should say ability, experience to acclimate these guys at this point. So I think it'll go really well. I'm so excited. Now I'm really hoping this is a male. As you can see here on the toes, it appears to be the case. If you look carefully, you can see the, already at this young size, there's those pores, but then what's kind of scary is they're not as clear on the other side. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure this is a young male. Sorry buddy, you're okay, you're okay. So we're gonna go ahead now and set them up in the temporary enclosure and then uh, we'll take a look at the plants and, and leaf litter I picked up. So if you watch my Project Mini Dragon playlist series, you've seen me do this a bunch of times for quarantine. We have a small little cave as a hide or shelter for the animal to feel secure, a water dish large enough for the animal to bathe in and drink from, a mealworm dish for food to be in and that we can carefully monitor if they're eating the food we offer them, and then a simple fake plan to offer more sense of security. The container the animal will be housed in is fairly straightforward as well. Cut a rectangle out of the lid, glued in mosquito screen, and drilled ventilation holes on the sides. Everything needs to stay very clean, so the substrate will just be paper towel. We're not even going to make it wet, we're just going to give it a tiny little spray. Next, we'll place our water dish in the enclosure, followed by our cave hide on the opposite side. Fake foliage gets tossed on top, being careful not to put it too much into the water. An exact amount of mealworms are counted and placed close to the cave entrance where the animal will be comfortable enough to come out and eat. 
And lastly, we fill up our water dish. Friends, just like that, we have a perfectly set up quarantine bin for Tribble and Notice Skink. Now, it's time to add our new little friend into the container. I'm wondering if for today's question of the day, you could give me some name suggestions for this little animal. Let me know in the comments section down below and everybody vote for your favorite suggestion. Awesome. All right, and last but not least, I picked up some Marupa leaves. And these are actually from my good friend, Mark Pepper of Understory Enterprises Inc. He actually brings in, as you can see, these authentic Amazonian rainforest leaf litters. And there's a few different species of tree that he offers leaf litter for. And it's all sustainably collected, as you can see, dried and clean and sorted for quality. So I like to support him. He does amazing work. And so when I want to get nice leaf litter for new upcoming projects, I always go and buy it from him most of the time. So we got a few bags here for some upcoming projects. And then I picked up a few plants from him as well. So here we have the ficus species Panama. It's a nice cutting here. I have this in a few other builds. It's a really nice species of ficus. I enjoy it a lot. It spreads nicely. It grows, in my opinion, a bit more slowly than Pomelia. And it's a very elegant plant, more manageable. You'll see in, uh, in an upcoming video how it grows. So we have a nice $10 plant there and then here we have a beautiful philodendron burl marks fantasy while established cutting uh really like this one so we're gonna hopefully find a good spot to plant this as well so that's it that's what i picked up at the expo didn't go too crazy had i not found that beautiful crocodile skink this is all I would have come home with, most likely. Unfortunately, no dice on the leopard gecko, but I will not give up. I'm going to keep looking. Well, everybody, there you have it. I sincerely hope you enjoyed watching today's video. Awesome expo all around. Thank you so much for watching. And if you want to see more Reptile Expo videos, check out the playlist up above. Otherwise, I can't wait to see you for our next video, which is going to be all about the tank behind me on this side. Take care, everybody. Have an awesome week.